Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at When We Feel Like It O'Clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom. We have uh, Steel Flyers and Joe Borg again, the professor and the steel man. Uh, uh-huh. We've been doing, we're finishing off our series on our predictions for the, for, uh, the play, se- second round of the playoffs. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm falling off. I can't even remember now how they go. They've been going so fast. Watching it all day, I'm going a little loopy. I'm going hockey loopy. If you're going to go loopy, it's the way to go, though. Uh, so we're getting into the final one, and this one is something close to our hearts because we are all, as you can tell, as Joe's swag going on there, we are all Philly fans here. Um, Philadelphia versus – oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, know, man. <laughs> I don't have my swag on, and you'll probably get the reason why we are going into this. Uh, I, okay, let's just still, let's go with it, man. This series is, uh, I, I, I would like to say it's easier than it is, but I don't think it's easy. What do you think, Steel? No, I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy at all. In fact, if we play the way we did against Montreal, we are not going to be playing yeah. any longer. You know what I mean? Um, look, we've, we've. We, I think Carter Hart has had his coming out party. Yeah. Right. That the the league now, the nation now knows who Carter Hart is, right? Mm-hmm. Because he just put it out there on display. Yeah. Um, but this is going to be a different series because the Islanders have a bit of a different team. They play a, a bit of a different style where they they kind of sag back more and trap a little bit more with Barry Trotz's system. You know what I mean? So, uh, and their although their defense is not quite as is a little bit more suspect, uh, but we need that speed up the middle. Um, this is not going to be the same series. This this potentially could go all the way. I think, or. You know, if one of our if, if we get hot, then then we can go. You know what I mean? So it, it's going to be really interesting how this plays out. It's going to be really interesting how this plays out because it's a bit of a different matchup than what we were playing against the, the Canadians. And if we don't match these guys and over and have more intensity than these guys, we're, we're going to be going home. It's going to be over quick. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I. I... I almost could have said the exact same words still. But, uh, <laughs> Joe, what do you, what do you, yeah, you have another angle on this? Joe's usually more the positive one. Professor Joe there, he's usually on um, the positive lean towards, assuming you're a Philly fan, of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, like uh, Yarif uh, said on his video he did this morning before I did mine that just went out on Flyers Nitty Gritty, so check out all the good stuff over there. Um we uh i talked about the fact that the islanders team it's a battle of wits between the coaching benches too because you got barry trotz you got av both guys like moving up the ice via their defense and don't care if your numbers aren't the sexiest they just want you to play a good 200 foot game and that's also probably why bavillier wasn't numbers ridiculous in the regular season and then all of a sudden when trotch let the leash loose and said hey give us let's the go, yeah let's go all of a sudden you saw the offensive capabilities of anthony there who's yeah. outplaying matthew barzal right now in the playoffs so i don't think any islanders fan would have expected anthony bavillier now barzal is playing great <laughs> it's just bavillier's playing even a notch above him so far so that's how Three That's goals. how That's, good yeah. uh, he's playing. But you have to watch for those guys. But I think this series is going to be a battle of which in the coaching benches, but it's also going to be a battle of goalies. And I would even have to give at this point of their careers. I like uh, like Yarif Varlamov and think he's been a solid goalie. He's not just been put into a crap situation in some of his old uh, teams when it came to their defense and stuff of that nature and how they played their defense. Um, but... I think he, this year, he played a good overall season. He's playing his best hockey in a while since the comeback. But the thing with Varley I've seen his whole career is, um, unlike Quick back in the day, Price, uh, Rene, when he was before this season, like there's guys that are good at looking around people in front of the net and finding that minuscule lane to see the puck. 
Varlamov's not one of them. Great point. He's never yeah, yeah. been one of those goalies that's good at finding a small lane to see the puck if you can get more than one person in front of the net. Yeah, so the exactly. key to this series is the Flyers have to stop trying to be too cute and get more in front of the net and play Thank you. similar to how they did in the regular season because Varlamov is not the best goalie once you pressure him in front of the net. That's when he starts getting pissed off. That's when you saw the sticks against the post back in the day with him. Uh, you can really get to him by putting guys in front. I don't think you see the sticks to the post because he's more mature nowadays, but you're getting into his uh, mentality a bit and you start getting to him if you put the um, guys in front of the net. I think that's a huge key in this series, along with aggressive forechecking. And Albe Kubel has been skating, so he yeah, could I saw that. actually be active today. I would definitely love to see him back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. I think we all, I think, I think we all would like to see that, right? I think yeah. we would all like to see him in the lineup for sure. Oh my gosh, Joe, what awesome points, man! Because that's exactly how we had to beat Price was get him moving from side to side, okay? And if you get if you get uh, Varlamov moving from side to side and people standing in front of him, and if he's not willing to do that, you know, look around to see to get those lanes. Yep, that that's exactly how it's going to be dirty but greasy. But hey, we'll take him. You know yeah, I mean? um, Varlamov is positionally is a fantastic goaltender. Mm-hmm. That's right. Thing. He's always in the right position all the time. Um, but he's, yeah, he seems like kind of his size. He he doesn't really, he seems like his face is almost right in the shoulders of people, like he's saying. And if that that definitely, he is susceptible to a really good shot, shot tippers and stuff like that, tipping and stuff like that. Um, so... What are we, James Van Riemsdyk, sir, when you go into the zone, I don't want to see you anywhere but in front of the net. Now, just go to the front of the net, stay in front of the net, and do that until you retire. Uh, 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 no, no, not corner, in front of the net. That's it. Just go <laughs> the don't have the speed to get in the corner and then go to the front of the net anymore. He's got to play in front of the net on the power play, period. And if he's not there, sit his ass. Sorry, said it. Had to say it. Had to be said. Done. But okay. thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. No, 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 because that's a great point because that's exactly what we have to do in order to beat the Islanders in Verlamo. And that's exactly what yeah. he's supposed to do. Yeah. The only other so time, That's like his biggest job. Mm-hmm. The only other thing Toronto, when I watched them, would ever do with JVR if they had – um, I can't remember who it was on the ice with him back then as a bigger forward. But uh, it was – they would sometimes put him to shoot because he used to have, I don't know how effective it is, he used to have it more effective. Uh, his one-timer has been solid. I haven't seen it in practice lately, though, so I would say keep him in front of the net. But with oh, the yeah, Isle, with the, with the uh, Maple Leafs, uh, they would sometimes, if we, they had another big guy, put him over here and have him shoot. But the problem with that is we've been getting too cute with passing, and I feel like that might draw us to do that even more. So that's why I would just put him in front of the net. You don't need to say, oh, now JVR's over there, so let's try to get it over to him. That's just going to make people overthink everything. So I would yeah. just say put it in front, put him in front of the net. Uh, Knack is obviously a guy coming back that likes going in front of the net too. That's why that's big, because he enjoys doing that on the offensive end, not for being the biggest guy. But That's okay, why I so- said I'd like to see Knack in the top six. Yeah. Like a lot of coaches will play guys like Knack in the top six, and maybe not so much on the power play, uh, just because of the type of game they play. It's a little difficult to be play those kind of minutes like that. But I'd like to see him on the top six, five on five, for that very reason, because he just goes to the net, goes to the net, goes to the net. Yeah. I, I I'd like to see it. Yeah, all, all yeah. Right. and he's but the he also record. yeah. I was just going to say, he also has the speed to go to the corners and win the battles in the corners, too. You know Mm. what I mean? Because he is one of the best four checkers that we have, too. You know what I mean? So, Uh, uh, and you know what? I I, see, I would like to see those two guys, JVR and Knack, both in the lineup at the same time. I I, I know that JVR is turning into a specialist right now, but okay, whatever. But I would like to see Knack on there, too, because Knack gives you that other side of what JVR used to be. Right. Where he can be in front of the net, but then he can also go out and be the forecheck and get, has the speed to get to the corners and win the battles for the puck, like JVR used to. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, from the Islanders' perspective, what do you think of 
the Islanders, how their lineup lines up to Philadelphia, where what the biggest concerns are on both sides. What's going to be the hindrance for the Islanders? What's going to be the hindrance for the Philadelphia Flyers in this series or the weakness that needs to be exposed on both sides or that can be exposed? What's the Islanders' weakness, do you figure? Uh, Ron, I guess. Well, I'll tell you what. I think the power play is going to be a huge a huge factor in this. Um, it's not like uh, the Islanders are burning up the the power play table either, <laughs> but uh-huh. they're still doing better than we are. Okay. And so I think that's going to be a key because as we know, as the series go on, uh, the whistle tends to go away a little bit more. Okay. And uh, those opportunities are going to be fewer and far between. And Islanders don't give up too many power plays to begin with. So if you get one, you got to be right all over it. Exactly. And we haven't been. We have not been able to put that nail in the coffin with the power play like we've like we've shown that we can do during the regular season. Where the regular season, we've used the power play to kind of put the nail in the coffin and take teams yeah. out and and win those games. You know, and we have not done that for this whole entire time we've been back. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. going to say, believe it or not, when they put the team stats up on the bubble trouble video they did on the Flyers uh, YouTube for the Islanders that they did uh, for the Canadians before last series, the Islanders power play was at seventeen point three, and we were at twenty point eight. So mm-hmm. they were actually. Worse than us. Oh, worse than us. Okay, I'm 7. sorry. Seven point three percent, which which is hard to do with how the Flyers' power plays look since coming back. So, uh, okay, yeah. Well, uh, I was the penalty yeah. was almost. The good. Islanders haven't had a good power play for like no. quite okay. a while. Now. It's been something. Yeah, my mistake. I, I was I was checking out uh, my my mistake. I was checking out the NHL uh, website in their their last ten games, and it had it has uh, team stats. Uh, fifteen point eight percent power play, fourteenth, and then it has uh, Flyers at ten point three percent, twenty second. Okay, maybe that is. Maybe this is from the um, regular season because this is just the end of. They put the stats at the end of the Flyers TV video where the oh. PKs are also. Uh, we win in faceoffs, uh, which the Flyers do against every team because of the top faceoff team. Uh, yeah. And- but yeah. penalty kills pretty even too with these two teams. Eighty one point eight for the Flyers, eighty point seven for the Islanders. So both of these teams, PKs, if you get the teams on the power play, are probably not teams you think the power plays of the other team will get going against. But see, that's but, why I think that's gonna be a huge factor. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it is. is. If, if one if Philadelphia can get their power play going, yes. they've got a huge benefit here. Could sure. you imagine if just nobody okay. scored in the like? It's just all five, like there's like two power play goals the entire series. At least with goals. Philadelphia, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least that with be crazy? Philadelphia, <laughs> they've been known to have a good power play. At yeah. least with Philadelphia, Islanders haven't. So the odds know. of them having doing well in the power play are slimmer. So if Philadelphia can get it going. Now, the Islanders don't give up too many power play chances. They play a system that doesn't allow for that too much. They're a very disciplined team. Uh, my, uh, my, the, my, the weakness, I think, for the Islanders is, again, uh, we talked about it before, is they have a defense that isn't really what you would call intimidating. So um, if we can get in there, if we can get in the corners and grind it out with, the, with that defense, before they can get the puck, getting quick, using speed on every line. I think I, I'm hoping that's the uh, what's going to be happening with uh, Av. He's going to see this and having a, a guy, a speed guy on every line. That's why I like having uh, Knack up there to get into the corners. And you know he's not going to get too many. He, he didn't do bad points wise, but get get a possession of the puck down there, and then allow. Our, uh, you know, our other that's what killed us. forwards to be able to do their work. Yeah. That's what killed us against Montreal. We were not able to win the battles to the puck, and we were dumping it in. We weren't mm-hmm. skating the puck in. If we skate the puck in, we have so much better success. But Especially we were dumping the, the yeah. But just even on five on five, we're dumping the puck in, and we were losing the battles to the puck because Montreal was beating us to the corners and beating us to the to the puck, and and they were more aggressive on their on their side, and and you know what I mean. So if we we can't play like that, 
We, we need to be the ones that's being, like we talked about previously, we need to be the aggressive team. We need to be the one with the, the, the pedal on the metal. We need to be the one dictating play instead of being dictated to. Yeah, I think the way we're going to do that is I think somebody's going to fight early in this series. Uh, this is a rivalry reborn. I kind of said that. We haven't played the Islanders in 33 years in the playoffs. It hasn't been that big of a rivalry in my lifetime, let's be honest. Since 96, this rivalry hasn't been that big. The Islanders have been no. crap most of my life. Um, so, And the Flyers have been off some of these years that the Islanders have been good. So it's never right. matched up, really. Nope. So until this year where this is kind of a – rivalry coming back to fruition fully where this year it's taking precedent over the rangers and flyers for the first time in a long time because the rangers are gone i mean luckily for their fans they have the first overall freaking pick but they're gone um and the (laughs) islanders uh and the islanders uh are here so i think um I just think this series is one of those things that is going to be great for the game and great for uh, us fans to have a new rivalry again that completely refuels because this Islanders team isn't going anywhere and the Flyers team isn't going anywhere. So you're going to have these teams, especially with a young goalie, that you're going to have battle and Carter Hart soon coming to that Islanders team for years to come. This is going to be a fun rivalry to watch, and I think it's good to set the tone when the first 10 minutes, I think there will be a fight in game one. Hmm. I see a very low-scoring game, low-scoring series, yeah. and um, I would like to say Philly. Uh, let's, 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 we got to pick a pick here, right? Uh, so let's, what are, what are you saying? Take Flyers. your Philly, take your Philliness out of your head, our Philliness out of our head. Let's look at this from. Uh, Wait a minute, from, I, that's that. I would be taking way too much out. I can't do yeah, that. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're not able to speak coherently in doing so, maybe try to keep a little bit in there. But uh, <laughs> as I little as much it. as we possibly can, try to look at it objectively and not from our heart. What do we? What do we say? This series. I already I you, said Flyer yeah. six yeah. So, or uh, other just, one because. Uh, this is going to be a tough battling series. We played the Islanders. You can't really look at the regular season games at all in this example. You really shouldn't because it's been three months. Uh, regular season means but, nothing. But nice. even, even if it hasn't been three months, you really couldn't look at them in general because it was before the Flyers got going. One was in October. The other was in November. And the next game was in February. February. Came back. And then we all of a sudden just let them score. And then they scored an empty net goal. So to make it 5-3 in that game. I don't know what's up with the Flyers, and I think this will be a low-scoring series. I agree with you, but at the same time, these two teams just love having something to three scores. It was 4-3, to three, Islanders win. 5-3, to three, Islanders win. Five. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I like it, I agree with what you're saying, but I think there's just something freaky with the hockey universe with these when two. When it comes to that. Series. I hope yeah, you're yeah. wrong, because my but, plan was to bet under every time. But, um... <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what's going on with these two teams. But anyway, the point is, I think this series is going to be a five on five series for the most part because of what we said. I don't see these teams yeah. getting their power plays going against these two penalty kills. If both of their power plays stink this playoffs, and they're going up against the Flyers PK, which is one of the best in the playoffs, and the Islanders PK, which is one of the best in the playoffs. So it doesn't spell well for oh our people. PP is going to get going. It sells well for, oh, both of our PKs are probably going to do great. And everyone's going to be like, wow, this is the least offensive uh, power play minded series I've ever seen in my existence. Like this has, <laughs> chance to, like this actually has a chance to be that where yeah. we want the five on five play to be dominant. And kind of like I said in the video, four check oriented along the boards, because then it's still really exciting to watch that. If you win, you don't care how you win because you watch exciting, aggressive play, even if you won two to one, rather than winning a, two to one let's clear the puck deep let's always just let them shoot from the outside there's different ways to win a game by one goal so you can that's why i think this series will be winning in more exciting ways in my opinion but it's going to be very close still and there might be some boring moments because in the last five minutes you're not going to be stupid if you're up two to one eventually you're going to drop back a bit and say let them shoot to the outside keep all these guys that only are good in front of the net to the outside and let them try to shoot, which is not their biggest strength. 
they have yeah. a good shot, but it's not their number one strength. So, like, I think this game has a chance to be the really exciting one because you're going to set a tempo, and then everything's awesome. kind of set, and then that might be when it gets more boring because then the teams will be like, how do I make <laughs> That, I think, game one has the chance, and Yarif kind of hinted at that on his video too, as did I. I think it's just going to be one of those games that's really exciting until the teams, like I said, have the battle of which, and the battle of which is probably what would make it boring at times as they try to match each other. You know, here's that's a great point too. And we also, because we're the home team, we also have last change for the first two games. Yes. So that's also going to be part of it too. And and I'll tell you what, I'm to take my flyered amount of it and everything else like that. I I thought this could potentially go seven games just because I think it's going to be a grind. Because I I think Philadelphia is going to have to get clunked on the head a game or two in this series just because I have that feeling, but. I'm still calling Philadelphia at, um, all the way. Uh, I'm saying six or seven. Um, I, just because if one team gets hot, it could be done quickly. Um, I, I also agree with what you said, pro, pro Joe. <laughs> uh, if, if this game comes out and it's a tone setter and, and we take it to them like we should, then I agree. It's going to be a quick series. Um, but, um, that's what we're that's what we're looking for. That's what we're hoping for. But if the Islanders catch catch Flyers in that kind of the way Montreal kind of caught us a little bit off guard, and we don't pick it up and we don't catch on, then I think we're going to be in trouble. But otherwise, I'm still calling Flyers. Yeah. Well, I have another thing that could help with that scouting the refs. I don't know if anybody ever follows that account. It's an account on Twitter that tells you about all the different refs and who's good at their job and who isn't. Um, but anyway, uh, they said anytime, anywhere or nine and oh, and I, I knew I always liked this guy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, season under Wes McCauley, six yeah. and oh in the regular season and three and oh in the playoffs. He's got the game tonight. Oh, well, that's good. Okay, so my final analysis on this is, uh, like, I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you, Steele. If uh, if if the Philly plays like they do in Montreal, it's over in five. Islanders will whip their ass. Yeah. I, I'm going to be interested to see how this team reacts when the Islanders are everywhere they go, because that's exactly what the Islanders do. If you think Montreal did it, you haven't seen nothing yet. The Islanders know where you're going to be before you get there, and they're going to be there. And you have a choice. You can either dump it in or you can slip back and try to readjust. But one of the things you can do is smack into them every time they do it. Every time they're in your face, you don't stop and you roll over the sons of bitches. To me, that's the way you beat the Islanders. When they want to get into where you are in your place, you don't stop. You just keep rolling over them. And um, that teams, I saw it all in the regular season. There were teams that did that. There were teams that said, okay, you know what? You're going to be in my face every time. Good. I'm going to knock you down. <laughs> and, and it's really the only way to kind of beat it. Truth um, is. Like teams like the Washington Capitals, they tried to change their system to change so they have they were more open, and they never beat the Islanders. Um, there was other team, Florida Panthers, never had a chance. And uh, the Islanders do have a team that can speed through it. They have a team that can go through it. In other words, let the puck go, go through the guy that's there. Yeah. Chase it, get it, and move on. So we'll see if that actually happens here. We'll see how they react when, um, like you said, if Montreal is able to do it and throw them off, what's going to happen when the Islanders yeah. do it? Well, I would say the Islanders have a more through it. I think through it was a good word to use because they have striding players where they're quick players are Bavillier, Eberle, and the reason they added Pajot to add a third quicker player. Right. They have they have what I would describe as striding players that you yes. stride that's a good, really well. That's a very yeah. good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, where the Canadians might have a skaters few guys that are more of skaters, but not yeah, as yeah, yeah. skilled nearly as the guys on the Islanders. So that's why this is a great battle in this series because you got guys that are going to try to run through you. So you're really going to get to see Sanheim. Uh, Myers, how those young guys step up. Hag is going to be big in this series with 
guys like that to yeah. you know, push them You're going to see Hag a lot, yeah. Absolutely. So I think uh, that's a very good point because, yeah, these guys do try to kind of almost like football players sometimes just <laughs> clear and then go through you yep. to get to the zone. Hey, man, yep. whatever works. So I think that's that, that's going to be the biggest uh, thing for me. Um, I'm basing this on what I saw. I saw a Flyers team get better every game, but I never saw a Flyers D- team be as good as the Flyers can be. So if – I'm going to say that they do sort of the same thing, but maybe at a higher level. I don't think we're ever going to see game two Montreal Flyers. God forbid. I hope we never do. I think that was absolute disaster. <laughs> and I hope we, I don't think we'll ever see that again. I, I'm, I'm praying to the gods that that never happens because that was like burnt my eyes. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to see them do the same thing. I'm going to say seven for now. Okay. I'm going to say seven cool. for now. I'm just, I'm giving it to Carter Hart. I think it's going to be a very tight series, very hot, hard fought series, almost to the point where I'm a little, I don't know. We'll see what happens in the next round, but yeah. uh, boys and girls, that's our full 42. That's the deep dive for today, getting into every angle and nook and cranny of what this series is all about. This is what we bring to you. This is the fine programming you get every time you hit the light, every time you hit the like button, which you're going to do. But every time you hit that button to see Steel Flyers, this is what you see. So talking about Steel Flyers, Steel Flyers, what's the website? What's that fancy website that you got going on there, big guy? Yeah, man. Steelflyers.com. Come there and check out where the Professor Joe likes to hold class. Um, you get the great pearls of wisdom right there. It links to all their sites, all their contacts, all their podcasts, all their great content. Um, check me out on Twitter, Steelflyers52. Uh, we'd love to see you. Love to have you. Um, you can also check me out on YouTube, Facebook. I'm all out there all over the place, but definitely come to Steelflyers.com and check out these two professionals. Yes, Joe, and you just said you just mentioned you just did something similar on a. What what was that about? Uh, I did a mini video, like I try to do before each series, um, on the Flyers' nitty gritty, which is like key factors, and then just some pump up stuff about the team. Uh, that's about ten or eleven minutes long. It's on the Flyers' nitty gritty YouTube. It'll be on the site yeah. soon, um, yeah, as an article, a mini paragraph thing leading into cool. it, but. Yeah, you can check that out and also Overtime Heroics and uh, Pub Sports Radio I do writing for and uh, Sports Fanatic News YouTube page that these fine gentlemen have been on a couple times. But it's been great talking about this series and all the great hockey. Stay tuned for more great videos we do on this wonderful playoffs. Yes, that's our full 42, boys and girls. You can find me on Steel Flyers' website. Just go over there. All my stuff is there. It's all you need. One-stop shop. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Enjoy the hockey.